It is widely regarded that Octagon Hall is one of the most haunted places in the South. So for years, I myself wanted to see this place with my own eyes to see if the paranormal claims were real. So join us as we see if these claims are real on our overnight investigation of Octagon Hall. Andrew Jackson Coldwell moved to Franklin, Kentucky from Logan, Kentucky. Andrew Jackson Coldwell and his first wife, Mary Elizabeth Akers, had three children, two girls and one boy. Franny was the only one of the original family members that survived into adulthood. The youngest sister was named Mary Elizabeth. Their brother was named Andrew Jackson Jr. or AJ for short. Alright, I just walked in the front door. These are all the pictures of the famous people who had been here. Not all of them, but a lot of them. You got uh, Aaron Goodwin here, Amy Bruni. Sometimes they say that this piano will play not play but they'll hear a key strike like ding we got a plasma ball going over there hopefully it gives the spirits a little bit of energy can you make that piano play can you play that piano for us Can you just play one tune for us? We'd like to hear you play. My name is Joseph. I'm here. And I apologize if we didn't introduce ourselves. It was a long ride to get in here, all the way from North Carolina, just to meet you guys. And we've been up for almost 24 hours. Look at the details though. In that piano, that is a beautiful piano. I'd love to hear somebody play it for us. In the dining room, people have seen a full body apparition of a Civil War soldier with one side of his face burned off and most of it missing. A large shadow figure has been seen walking amongst the windows. There are also claims of some hearing the piano play by itself. This right here was the dining room for everyone. That right there, what does that flag say? Hand sewn. Hand sewn Confederate Naval Jack. Wow, utilized by Stonewall Jackson's chapter, UDC, North Carolina, donated in 1923. Wow. Two chapters by widow of Stonewall Jackson. Cool. That's where we're. That's where we are from. Is North Carolina. Maybe you can communicate with us. Let us know that you're here. Can you show yourself? That was the best. Oh yeah, that's Stonewall Jackson's widow. Oh yeah? Cool. Stonewall Jackson's widow. That is neat. Apologize for the air conditioner, guys. It is very hot. We got a mess in here. We've been setting up. Oh, I want to show y'all this while I'm here. Ooh, excuse me. This right here is Andrew Jackson and, and his second wife. Huh? Harriet. Harriet. Andrew Jackson Godwill and his second wife, Harriet. What they look like. 
to me. What is this picture right here? Uh, this is part of Bowling Green's map back in the day. Another claim is that a group of investigators started hearing someone knocking on the front door. They heard the knocker, and it's a large metal knocker from the 1860s, and it lets off a large metallic sound, and they heard three distinct knocks and thought that someone was at the front door. After immediately opening the door, there was no one there. This right here is the front door. Big, thick, heavy front door. I can only imagine seeing it in the morning time when they woke up and they opened the door and that dead Confederate guy was out there. A lot of times I'll hear the door bang or the doorknob rattle. Check this out. Confederate hiding space. And there's a Confederate guy in there. Oh God. Confederate guy hiding in the hiding space. Is there anybody in there now? I guess that's some, some, some suspenders that they found. But yeah, open in 2000, open in 2013. Suspenders and buttons found inside and displayed in a uh, shadow box frame on wall. Wow, so they found those suspenders inside that hole. That's neat. Can you be, can you bang on the door for us? We'll rattle this chain. We'll wiggle the door handle. about play us a tune. We'd really like to get to know you and to meet you guys. We mean no disrespect. We're just here to learn about you. Around 1858, Mr. Coldwell's first wife, Mary Elizabeth Akers, died. Some believe she passed away from typhoid fever or scarlet fever. A few months after the passing of Mr. Codwell's first wife, Mary Elizabeth Akers, Mr. Codwell's youngest daughter, Mary Elizabeth, died in an early age. The story goes that she was down playing in the winter kitchen that is located in the basement and that she was possibly poking around the fire. No one knows the real situation, but somehow her dress caught on fire. Maybe an ember popped out onto her long dress, or maybe her dress swung into the fire. It wasn't long before the flames engulfed her. It's believed that she didn't die right away. She may have suffered for days before her passing. She was said to be around the age of 11 to 13 years old when she passed away. The youngest boy, AJ, was only 18 months old. Being only a toddler, it's said that he fell from the top of the main stairway inside the home and tragically broke his neck. All three of the family members are buried in the family plot just out back of Octagon Hall. Mary or anybody else in here, if I roll this ball, can you roll it back to me please? Is that our ramp hog? Can you roll the ball back for us, please? My name is Joseph, and this is Carrie. A large shadow figure and a mist has been seen all over the house, but there are many claims of it being seen on the second floor as well. After being burnt in the winter kitchen, Mary Elizabeth was brought into her bedroom where it is said that she passed away several days later in agonizing pain. 
Witnesses have claims of toys moving around by themselves around the room on their own. Some even claim that they have felt a child's hand grabbing them as if to say, I'm still here. It is said that Mary Elizabeth likes to play ball, and if you roll the ball, she will roll the ball back to you. Can you roll that ball to Miss Carey? She likes to play. She's not going to hurt you, bother you. Francis Elaine Coldwell. And that is Elizabeth, whoops, Elizabeth Aikens Coldwell. Mary, little Mary Coldwell. Elizabeth, can you roll that ball? Can you roll that ball, Mary? Little AJ. AJ or Elizabeth, can you roll the ball for us? We just want to play with you. passed away like that. AJ, are you still around? Do you want to play? You want to play, AJ? There's no telling how many soldiers actually passed away in the hospital room because it was used to treat Confederate and Union soldiers. The closet door leads to a drop-down hideaway place that drops down to the first floor inside the wall, where Confederate soldiers would hide from Union soldiers looking for them. That same closet door, witnesses say that they have seen the doorknob rattle and then swing open on its own. The mannequins in the room are set up as if they are performing a surgery and taking care of wounded soldiers. These mannequins are said to move arm positions and it is said that their eyes will follow you around the room. This is where they uh, would do surgeries at. In this room, Confederate or Union soldiers. How you doing, Doc? There's a soldier in the bed. A wool, wool blanket. Like you got a preacher over here or something reading his last rites, smoking a cigar in here in the hospital. <laughs> That's Jessica. That's Jessica the nurse. They name her Jessica. They say sometimes like her her eyes or what move? Her eyes, her head, the docs. Uh, mm -hmm. Footprints sometimes fall and his arms will be stretched out. Oh, yeah. So his arms will be moved and stuff like that. That's kind of neat. So, Doc, what's wrong with the patient here? You got pneumonia or something? Was that you just on? Yeah, I said, what in the world? Oh, was it keep closing out? Yes. Because you're probably on a video and you're probably just taking pictures. I am videoing. You got a little timer thing out there? Yes. You got a. Got a Confederate soldier over here. Got a sword ready to go. Jessica, can you uh, can you move for us? His name's Joe, and I'm Carrie. Yeah, my name's Joe. I, my apologies. This is Carrie. This is my wife. We've come a long way to meet you, all of you. Can you move for us? 
turn your eyes or anything for us. No disrespect, nothing like that. I swear earlier I thought I seen her eyes move earlier today. But we were told that this door right here likes to rattle. And if it starts to rattling, that you need to get out of the way. It's most likely we want to hit you if it starts rattling. So the best thing to do is to get out of the way. Can you open that door for us? Or rattle that uh, doorknob? I don't believe you can do it. Show me, show me that I'm wrong. I swear it does. I re it really, they really do. It's like they, I know they do look like they follow you. It is crazy. This here was the the master bedroom. Look at that red dress. Wow, that's pretty. This is where Andrew and his wife would have slept out every night. Got to look at the detail in the bed frame. That is pretty. That's pretty how they got the had the beds made. That's awesome. I wish they still had made beds like that today. That is awesome. I love it. I don't know, that thing feels pretty soft. Could you imagine though having to go to the bathroom in like a potty pot like that? No. Yeah. Well, I guess I could if I had to, but Lord, man, that wouldn't be be a lot different from what we got today. Mr. Coldwell later married Harriet Morton from Logan County. She was a distant related third cousin. Construction finished about 1859 just prior to the American Civil War with the help of slave labor. Andrew Coldwell was pro-Confederate and a high-ranking Mason. It's also believed that Octagon Hall was used for a Masonic temple because Masonic symbols were used in all of the designs of the house. November 1861, Kentucky declared that it would be a free and independent state and made Bowling Green the capital of the Confederate state of Kentucky. Bowling Green is just north of Octagon Hall by only 13 miles. On February 13th, 1862, as the Confederate Army evacuated Bowling Green, the Confederates left without a fight and marched toward Octagon Hall. Around 9,000 Confederate soldiers camped on the plantation's grounds, and the officers most likely stayed in the house. Two days later, the Union Army came in pursuit, and the Union Army wasn't happy that Mr. Coldwell's family helped the Confederates. The Union killed all the cattle, and even Mr. Coldwell's favorite milk cow, Old Spot, and ate all of the food that they could find. They even threw the carcass of a cow into the family's drinking well, so that way they wouldn't have clean water to drink. The Union threatened to burn the house down, but never did. The Union knew that Andrew Coldwell was a pro-Confederate supporter, and Andrew would help Confederate soldiers with food, medicine, and even hide them in the home in its many hiding places. So the Union would stop in many times to search the home for Confederate soldiers at all hours of the day or night. One of the stories is that of a Confederate soldier that made his way to the house to escape Union soldiers. He had been wounded in the hand and foot. The Union Army came looking for him. The Confederate was taken and hidden in the attic. While the Union soldiers were looking for him, 
He apparently took off his boot to relieve the pressure on his wound. Later, when the Coldwell family went to get him, he had already bled out. A split boot was actually found in 1911 in the attic. On another occasion, a Confederate soldier made his way to the house sometime during the night. When the family got up the next morning, they found him dead on the front steps. The soldier apparently didn't have enough energy to knock on the door, or they didn't hear him knock. During a cleaning of the basement not too long ago, someone noticed a section of the wall that didn't have any mortar around the bricks. A hiding place was discovered under the front steps. Apparently, the Coldwells would take the bricks out and tell the Confederate soldiers to crawl up in there and set the bricks back up without any mortar so it would give the appearance of a wall. After finding the hiding locations, they used a metal detector and found a few Mississippi Confederate coat buttons and some unused 36 caliber bullets. This is that, uh, this is the area where they had the uh, Confederates hiding at. Back in there, they found like, I think four Tennessee uh, Confederate buttons, and several, um, several mini balls. This is the front of the stairs. You can get several people hidden back there. Mm -hmm. The soldier who passed away in the attic by taking his boot off. Some believe that his name may have been Edward. Some of the claims are that they can still hear at times Edward dragging his nearly shot off leg around on the floor up in the attic. And up there is the attic. What was that noise? Well, we, uh, that's the deal downstairs. <clears throat> but there is, that is the attic. And I do have a camera up there. The house was used throughout the war as a sanctuary and a hospital. The house had enough little hiding places they could stick soldiers in different places. The Union forces weren't stupid or untrained though. If they suspected that someone was hiding, they would tear the property apart and try to find them. Why not? Um, Do you like that torch? Oh, other flashlight. And that one too. Sweet. And that one. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. Can you turn it off? Fabulous. Wow. Is it a true, is, is it a true, is it true that there's a portal in the corner? Can you turn something on if it's true that there's a portal over there in the corner? Okay. Joseph. Oh, Joseph. Joseph. Is that mine? Yeah, that's yours. No, it was Dale's. Oh, it was Dale's. oh. Yeah, that was mine. Okay, you turned on that torch. Joseph is here. That's his name. Mm -hmm. Now, can you turn on... Chair. <laughs> what? Chair. Chair? <laughs> Carrie's sitting in the chair and a cat ball. Sweet. Awesome. This room is said to have a vortex or a portal in the room. And if you stand in the center of it, you will become unbalanced and become dizzy. I'm going to take a flashlight or torch. When you turn those on, when I get to the number of spirits in this room. Okay, good. Can you turn it off? They have to decide who's going to speak. I know. One. Two. Two? There's only two of you? Flames. Flames. Flames? Hmm. I can't remember if he said anything about a fire. Uh, yeah, Mary Elizabeth. Yes, right. Yeah. And that After the Civil War was over, Andrew Jackson Coldwell, the owner of Octagon Hall, died in 1866 of typhoid fever. His widow and second wife, Harriet Morton, kept the property until 1918.
In 1999, Billy Bird decided to open a retail store downtown to play on the boom of reenacting. He would provide reenactment uniforms, reproduce pieces, and some real artifacts from wars for sale. In late 2000, he was running out of room and he needed a bigger location. So a unique opportunity arose that he could move into the Octagon Hall and turn it into a museum and it would provide more room for the museum to grow. The first day, January the 1st, 2001, was the day that Octagon Hall Foundation took possession of Octagon Hall. So Billy decided he would go out to the Octagon Hall and start cleaning up and to think about where he was going to set up all the displays. He went through the house photographing with a new digital camera taking before and after pictures of the home. He had gone through most of the house without looking at any of the pictures. After going downstairs, he stopped at the bottom of the stairs and began looking over the photographs, sorting out which were good. He found that the photograph of the stairs and the landing had a huge white swirl in it. So he was wondering, what in the world is this? Since he wasn't smoking, it wasn't allowed in the museum, he knew it wasn't smoke. That was the first unusual experience on the very first day moving in to the hall. Within a short period of time, he would come out here on his spare time and start working on the rooms, cleaning them, and he started to hear noises such as doors slamming, footsteps, faint voices, and he knew beyond a doubt that no one else was in the hall but him. Over time, there were just so many things happening that he couldn't explain. Here's some of the evidence that Octagon Hall has gotten themselves on their DVR cameras while no one was in the home. One is a door on the second floor that closes by itself while no one was there. An unknown mysterious light just appears right beside the candelabra down in the dining room. The kitchen is the location where it is said that Mary Elizabeth was playing and got her dress caught on fire and ended suffering and dying about seven days later. EVPs are caught in the kitchen. Also, the pot holder from the fireplace has been seen swinging out on its own. When the new owners took possession of Octagon Hall, they didn't know what lied behind the wall in the winter kitchen. But during a recent renovation, they discovered a hiding space. It is believed to be connected to the slave houses out behind Octagon Hall. But there is no way to confirm this because it collapsed in on itself. It is also believed that they used to hide Confederate soldiers down there as well as it could have been used as a torture chamber. There are even reports of Mary Elizabeth's full body apparition being seen in the kitchen as well. This is where Mary Elizabeth, uh, they said that she was probably standing, well, most likely standing here preparing a meal. And possibly that she was making a meal. They're not sure 100%. She might have just been in here helping cook a dinner or the dinner. And they said that an ember caught on her dress. And the types of dresses that they wore back then. What was that? Oh, <laughs> you scared me there for a second. But the types of dresses that they wore back then uh, caught on fire pretty quickly. They say that she suffered for about a week anywhere from like three to seven days before she actually died. You know, she was around the age of, uh, what was she, between 11 and 13? Yeah. So, uh, very sad thing, very sad. They say that sometimes this arm here will swing out on its own. Just like so. Like that. All right, and then they say it will swing back sometimes too. But that's how they check that they check their food back in the day. Oh, right, this is what I wanted to show you that I thought was pretty cool. This cabinet here. 
This is a storage pantry tunnel entrance. They said this is a tunnel down here. It was excavated in 2012. And anyway, there's a uh, deep hole down there. Not sure how deep it went. How deep did it go? I can't see it. I think it's actually a cutoff, and I think it's collapsed or something, or they they collapsed it. But they said it actually run down into like a like a forty foot by something room that connected like a I want to say like maybe just what did they say the slave quarters or these outdoor kitchen. I can't remember, but pretty crazy. The history of Octagon Hall is one of unimaginable tragedy due to all the lives lost within its walls. It's no wonder there are so many ghostly claims. But is Octagon Hall really haunted? We will leave that for you to decide.